Good morning, Grace Christian University students and staff and whoever happens to be joining us in this way. I hope you are doing well wherever you're at in the country, maybe even other parts of the world. It's so amazing that we can do things this way. Uh, my name is Chad Stevens and I am a youth pastor out in Washington State. And I graduated from Grace Bible College as it was known back then 20 years ago. It's hard to believe, 20 years ago and one month actually. And a lot has happened since then. Uh, I got married to my beautiful wife, Tanisha. We adopted a daughter and she is graduating on Thursday. And we have a nine-year-old son who's just finishing up third grade. Our both sets of grandparents have passed on and my wife's brother even tragically passed away a few years ago. We've had just a wide range of emotions, some great things that have happened and some really sorrowful things that have happened since then. But God has been faithful through it all. And that's kind of what I want to talk to you about today is rejoicing in the Lord. And I want to ask you, do you have something, what do you have to be joyful about today? And there's so many things, if we were to look at our circumstances, even, you know, just this past weekend, looking around at the news, um, riots that are going on that are related to racism, um, the past three months with the COVID-19 pandemic and being shut down and being holed up in our homes. So what do you have to be joyful for? If we look at our circumstances, there's sometimes there's not a lot to be joyful for when we look around in our world. Um, be joyful when I fail a test. Yeah, maybe. Uh, be joyful when I get in a car accident. Possibly. Um, it's, it's easy to be joyful when there's great things that are going on, you know, when a new relationship starts or when you get married or, or um, you know, all sorts of things that, that happen in life that are joyful. But what about the not so positive things that happen? Are we supposed to be joyful in those too? Well, I, I think so. And, and God, I think, is shaping who we are through those things. And it's hard to see sometimes in the moment. But uh, as we look back, we can see how God has been faithful. So I want to look at... Philippians, and we're going to be in Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 20, and I'll read through it and we'll comment, make a few comments. Um, just in the whole book of Philippians here, depending on what ver version of the Bible you're reading, Paul mentions the word joy or rejoice in you know, the entire book at least 14 times. And it's, it's the theme of Philippians. And if we were to think that if everything was going great for Paul, that he was saying to rejoice in the Lord, we'd say, oh yeah, yeah, okay. But if you think about where he was, he was in prison, and he was in prison for doing what God had told him to do, for sharing about Jesus. But he was in prison, and he was joyful, and he was uh, an example of what it's like to be joyful in not so ideal uh, in a not-so-ideal situation. So let's read Philippians 4. Starting verse 4, he says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And if we were just to stop there with those five words, we could have a lot to talk about. Um, rejoice, he says. In what? In the Lord. Not in our circumstances, in the Lord. And how often? Always. Rejoice in the Lord always. In the good, in the bad, and everywhere in between. But he goes on to say, I will say it again, rejoice. I think Paul really wants us to rejoice and be joyful in the Lord. He says in verse 5, Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So he, he brings up anxiousness. And a lot of people are anxious now um, for, for lots of different reasons. So if you're, you're anxious, he says to pray. Pray about it. Give it to God. Don't dwell on it, but give it to God. Um, ask, him, ask God for what your needs are, but do it with thanksgiving, uh, he says. So if you're anxious, pray about it. And then something supernatural happens when we do that, he, he says here, that God will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. And this is something that goes beyond what we can think about. Um, it's, it's not a natural thing. Thing that happens that we could have uh, you know bad things going on in our lives and we can be anxious about it but God can give us peace 
So that's a supernatural thing that God does uh, when he answers our prayers in that way. Then he goes on to say in verse 6, no, 8, verse 8, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. So a lot of where our joy comes from, it starts up here. You know, it's our thought life. And Paul talks about, uh, what, are, what are you thinking about? Is it true? So what in your thought life, and I want you to think about your own thought life for right now, what's going on up here, and answer these questions. And whenever you're thinking about things or dwelling on something up here, Put it to the test and ask yourself this, these questions. Is what I'm thinking about true? Is what I'm thinking about noble? Is what I'm thinking about right or pure? Is what I'm thinking about lovely, admirable, excellent, or praiseworthy? And if it, it's no to any of those things, then maybe we shouldn't be thinking about it. And, and we're supposed to be thinking about those things. And, of course, Jesus Christ answers yes to all those things. So if we're thinking about him or if we're thinking about godly things, they're going to answer the word the the word yes in all those those things there. And then uh, Paul goes on to talk about contentment. In verse ten, he says, "I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you have renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you have been concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have." Learn the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. Um, so Paul talks about, he's talking about the people that he has a relationship with. And he is rejoicing in them. And I'm sure you have people in your life that you can rejoice in, that they're in your life. Um, that could cause you to, to have joy today. Uh, and he was talking about being con content. He's had situations where he was he had plenty to eat, and sometimes he didn't have plenty to eat, but he had learned how to be content in it. And I think that that's one thing that um, gets keeps us off from being joyful is not being content. You know, we have all sorts of situations where we want to um, grow. We we want to do more. We want to go out and and we want to. Uh, be successful and we want to have more and those are those things are good but if we're not content in the moment um, it can cause us to to not be jo so joyful so Paul is talking about uh, being content in those situations and and he um, he lived through it he, he lived through being in plenty and bling, being in want and, and was content full through it so he's not just saying it but he's actually living it out and actually uh, in Philippians 1 verse uh, halfway through verse 18 he says yes i will continue to rejoice for i know that through your prayers and the help given by the spirit of jesus christ what has happened to me being in prison will turn out for my deliverance and even before that in verse 18 he says the important thing is that in every way whether from false motives or true christ is preached and because of this i rejoice so even in his circumstances where things were less than ideal, he was rejoicing that Jesus Christ was being preached. And that was the thing that was near and dear to his heart. The biggest thing that he wanted to see happen was that people would come to know Jesus Christ. And is that near and dear to my heart? And is that near and dear to your heart? Um, I hope so. And, and when we, we do think about that, that people are coming to Christ, whether whatever situation we're in, we can rejoice in that. And just talking about contentment too, maybe you find yourself maybe you're couch surfing in friend, friends couches because you don't have a place to live or you don't have enough rent money um that's easy to say for someone who has a house and, and doesn't isn't living in that situation but maybe maybe you need to find contentment that, that you got a place to stay um maybe you have plenty and maybe you don't have plenty but but we need to be content with whatever it is so, so paul's urging us to do that and then he says these words that we know uh, very well. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. I can do everything through him for give, who gives me strength. So I can I can have plenty and I can be in want, but I can still, um, God gives me the strength to, to be able to be content for it. 
And um, just in the situation that you're in right now, uh, being in college and I don't know when your graduation will be, if you're, you're graduating a year from now or two years from now or three years from now. But remember those words, you can do all things through Christ who gives you the strength to do it. Anything that, that a person can do, if God allows you to do it and you put your mind and you put in the, the work to do it, God gives you the strength to do it. And then Paul goes on to talk about um, the Philippians and how they they had helped him out and 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 um, they had supplied him his needs and, and there was this this great relationship there that, that they had. Um, so maybe think about the people that God has placed in your life and how they provided for you um, for thinking about what to be joyful about because God gives. Um, those people in our lives. I want to give you, as we close, six things that you can rejoice in the Lord about, because that's what we're really talking about. We're not talking about rejoicing in our circumstances, um, whether we graduated, we have a diploma, got good grades or not good grades. That Those things are, are good, and we should be really focusing on the Lord. So how can we, we focus on the Lord? There's so many things that we can rejoice in the Lord about, but I'm going to give you six just for time's sake just to focus on. You can write these down and look at them later um, when maybe you're down um, to rejoice in the Lord, to, to prompt you to rejoice in the Lord. The first thing is, He is truth. And you can look at John 17, 17. God is truth. There's so many things out there that claim to be the truth, but God is the truth. The second thing is, He is eternal. Revelation 22, 13. He said, Jesus says, I am the, the Alpha and the, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. God is eternal. Before we were, God was. After we're gone, God still is. And he knows our future and he holds it and he knows it better than we do. And we can rest in that fact and we can rejoice in the Lord that he is eternal. The third thing is he fulfills all promises. Um, Joshua 21.45 says, The Lord fulfilled every one of his promises to the nation of Israel. And he who provided or fulfilled all his promises to the nation of Israel will fulfill all of his promises to the body of Christ that he has promised that have still yet to be fulfilled. And one that I like to look at is that before things get really bad, uh, before that we will be um, taken out of here to be with him before his wrath gets fully poured out. And, uh, and we can rejoice in that. Number four. He provides all our needs. And Matthew 6, 25 through 34 talks about being well, well um, fed and being clothed. And he provides all our needs. And Paul was saying here in, in Philippians about the relationship that he had with people. God provides uh, people in our lives to take care of us, to love us, and to uh, just have a relationship with. And we can rejoice in that. Number five, he has revealed himself to us through his creation. Romans 1, 19 and 20 talks about that. When we look outside and when we see all the things that God has created, all the beautiful things, all of them point to him. And he has revealed himself to us through his creation and through his word too. And the sixth thing is, he placed everything in exactly in the order that it should be in. Um, Job 26, 7 talks about he suspends the earth in, in nothingness basically. Um, when you, you think about that, if you watch the, the launch of the, the spaceship this weekend, that was really cool. I watched that with my son um, and them going up into outer space and they can look back down into Earth and nothing is holding it there. Uh, but God uh, suspended it there. And you've probably heard it said before that if we were any closer to the sun, we would burn up and die. If we were any further away, we would freeze and die. But God placed it, everything in exactly how it should be. And we can rejoice in things like that. I'd love, uh, look forward to seeing what you have to say as you comment. Maybe what are some other things that you rejoice in the Lord about? Like I said, there's hundreds, thousands of other things that we can rejoice in the Lord about. What do you rejoice in the Lord about? Uh, let's go ahead and pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us cause to pause here and think about you. When we look around in our circumstances, things can look grim sometimes. Sometimes they look great. Sometimes things are going great. 
Help us to rejoice in it all, Lord. Help us to rejoice in you and remember to think about things about you that we can rejoice in. It's in your son Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Have a good day, everybody. After all, this is the day that the Lord created. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.